With this video, I want to show you a cool Lightroom trick with which we can use the tone curve to introduce more intense colors to the sky. So if you want to follow along, make sure to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters because I will be showing the whole editing process for this image. So let's start right away with the basic adjustments. I'm not changing the profile this time because I think it looks quite good. What I want to do is to adjust the basic exposure. What that means is I'm going to bring down the exposure overall quite a bit. And this allows me to in turn bring up the whites and that will just help adding some more contrast to this image. At the same time, I want to bring up the blacks because I feel like I don't want the shadows of the image to be too deep. So let's just bring them up very, very slightly. Now to further work on the contrast, I'm going to very carefully bring down the shadows. Again, we don't want to make the darkest parts too dark, but a little bit of punch really helps to make this image look more interesting. Once I set up the base exposure, what I like to do next is to work on the white balance. The snow does have a very strong blue tint, which is not very natural. So I want to fix that by bringing up the temperature to a point where the snow just appears to be a bit more natural. Also, this helps make the sky look a bit warmer, which I think looks pretty nice. So right around here, we are in a very good spot. Now we could think about adjusting the tint as well, but I think at this point it doesn't make much sense and we can always go back to this slider later anyways. So let's continue adding a bit of texture, making this whole shot look a bit sharper. I'm going to drop the clarity, which adds some very subtle glow to this image. And if you want, you could also bring down the dehaze. However, in this case, I don't want to touch the dehaze slider. Finally, let's also raise the vibrance just to make this image a little more colorful. And there we have the picture after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see we do have a lot more contrast and we do have a much more natural white balance. Now that we have set up the base image, I want to focus on a few areas more specifically. And for that, we are going to be using masking. And right away, I want to show you how we can use the tone curve to introduce more intense, warmer colors to the sky. Since we want to target the sky, all we need to do is to create a new sky mask. Usually Lightroom doesn't have much issues selecting the sky, but in this case, you can see there is a part that is not selected. I don't think it's a big deal. I'm ignoring this area for now. So what we want to do with this sky mask is to look for the curves menu. We don't want to adjust the point curve yet. What we want to do first is to go into the red channel. We are going to grab this point and we're going to slightly drag it to the left. What this will do is the red highlights will become more intense. So the further I push it, the more red we will get in the sky. I think right around here is a good point. But of course, we cannot only use the red channel. We also can make use of green and blue. In this case, I just want to make use of the blue channel with which we can kind of tone down the redness of the sky. If you take a closer look at the curves panel, you can see colors in each corner. On the left, we have some blue tones and in the bottom right corner, there are some yellow tones. If I once more take the point for the highlights and drag it further into the blue corner, the highlights becoming more blue. That's not what we want. So I'm going to bring it slightly down into the yellow range. And in turn, we are mixing the adjustments from the red channel where we made the sky more red with the adjustments of the blue channel, introducing more yellow to these highlights. So I think something like this looks pretty good. Let me deactivate the mask to see what a difference this makes. This was our image with just a bunch of raw adjustments and here we have it with the tone curve applied to the sky. This is looking much, much better. And of course, we can further tweak these settings right here. As I mentioned earlier, you could also use the green channel. Let's say you want to introduce even more magenta to the sky. You see in the bottom right corner, we do have the magenta range. So I'm bringing down the point for the highlights and thus introducing more magenta. Of course, at some point it starts to become a little bit too unnatural. So in this case, I'm not going to use the green channel because I'm happy with the red and blue channels. 
However, what we can do is we can add a little more punch to the sky using the point curve right here. And I'm doing this by adding a simple S curve. So I'm starting somewhere right here with the darkest tones, bringing them a little further down. And we're going to target the highlights somewhere up here and bring them further up. This is looking great. In case you want to further balance the colors of the sky, what we can do as well is of course to use the white balance. I'm going to set this up by first increasing the saturation. This helps seeing better which colors we have in the sky. You could also bring up the saturation all the way and you can clearly see a very strong magenta color cast, which we could fix by bringing down the tint. So let's do that. I'm going to slightly drop the tint. And I do think I also want to bring up the temperature just a little bit. All right, this is looking much better. And at this point, I'm going to bring back down the saturation. So right around here, I think is a very good spot. And that's how you can use masks and the tone curve to introduce a very nice color tone to areas like the sky. Once more, let me deactivate the sky mask to see the difference from before to after. However, I want to continue with a bunch of different masks. What I want to do is to further work on the sky using a linear gradient. Let's bring it down like this. And the reason is I want to make the top part of the sky a little more dramatic by making it darker. So in this linear gradient, I'm going to bring down the exposure and this almost serves like a vignetting effect, just guiding the viewer's eye more towards the center by making the top area darker. We can further make it darker by bringing down the blacks. Reducing the blacks will of course not affect the highlights and thus we can just add a bit of contrast to the sky. I do think I want to use another linear gradient for the sky. So let's create a new one. In this case, I'm going to tilt it very slightly, but again, I'm going to be covering a big area of the sky like this. I do think we could add some more colors in here. While I do like how the brighter parts of the sky have this very warm color tone, I do think the top could use some more coldness. That's the reason for me to bring down the temperature. I'm going to drop it quite a lot, actually. And doing this, we will get this very nice gradient from the warmer tones on the horizon level to the colder tones at the top of the sky. So this is looking really good. I want to continue making this area darker by bringing down the blacks. And let's introduce some contrast as well. That's looking wonderful. Let me create a radial gradient for the left part of the sky. With this radial gradient, I want to make the light a little stronger towards the horizon from where the sun is coming in. So right around here. Of course, I don't want to change the landscape in the foreground because this part of the landscape lies in the shadows. So making this area brighter doesn't make much sense. For that reason, let's click on those three dots, go to intersect and choose sky. Then what I'm going to do in this area is to slightly bring up the exposure. I think I'm also going to bring out the blacks and I want to introduce some more temperature, making this area just a bit warmer. All right, that's looking great. Next, I want to use another sky selection mask. This time, however, I'm going to invert it because I want to affect the landscape in the foreground. And what I'm going to do in here is to slightly bring up the shadows. And I'm also going to bring up the contrast a little bit. All right. Now let's work on the foreground. I'm using a linear gradient covering the very near foreground. Here I just want to introduce a bit of shadow leading into the landscape. So here I'm simply going to bring down the exposure, taking out some of these highlights this way. And let's also bring down the temperature, making these shadows just a bit colder. Perfect. Now there's one more rather complex mask I want to create with which I want to target the first hill right here in the foreground. With the natural light already, this little hill is brighter than the hill in the back. I want to emphasize this effect, but this is a little bit more complex as you will see. So I'm going to create a linear gradient roughly overlapping that hill. Then I'm going to subtract a linear gradient coming in from the foreground where we have introduced the shadows already. Now for the next step, I'm going to make this linear gradient really, really obvious by bringing up the exposure a lot. 
So something like this. This is just so I can see where the linear gradient is actually affecting the image. Now I want to modify this linear gradient by subtracting a brush. And since we have a really hard edge in the landscape right here, I'm going to use no feather on that brush. So we do have a very hard edge. And with that brush, I'm clicking right here once. Then I'm going to a point further along this edge of the hill, hold down the shift key and again click once with the brush. Holding down the shift key while using the brush like this will create a perfectly straight line between the two brushing points. And this way we can work our way through the image. Again, I'm holding down the shift key and just place the brush a little bit above the edge and click in once. And I'm continuing my way along the edge of this little hill and therefore we are creating a perfect mask. All right, this is looking great. Of course, now that we have set up the mask, we now need to turn down these adjustments. I'm going to slightly bring down the exposure. I only want to make this hill slightly brighter like this, maybe even bring up the whites a notch, but that should really be enough. We can also make the hill in the back a little darker. I'm going to use a linear gradient covering the very top of that hill. And I'm going to subtract the sky selection. And let's also subtract a bit from the right side like this. And then all we need to do is to bring down the exposure, introducing some more shadows to that hill. Wonderful. All right, that's it for the masking of this image. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. Now there's not much left to do. Of course, we want to do a little bit of color grading. So let's open up the color mixer and I want to work on the saturation. Basically, I want to make all these warmer tones of the sky more intense. So let's bring up red. Let's bring up orange. Let's bring up yellow. And since we also have some purple and magenta tones in here, I'm going to raise them as well. Just like this. Of course, we can also make use of split toning. So let's open the color grading panel. And I want to start with the highlights, which we want to emphasize with some warmer tones. So again, set up the hue to a warmer color tone right around here. And let's bring up the saturation. I'm only going to be using a low amount of saturation because I don't want to overdo it. I want to keep these very nice looking pastel color tones, which are rather desaturated. Now let's also work on the midtones. For the midtones, I'm going with a colder tone to keep this nice looking color balance between cold and warm. So this is looking good. Let's again raise the saturation just a tiny bit. All right. And the same for the shadows. Set up the hue to something cold and bring up the saturation a notch. Perfect. Then let's open up the calibration tab. And as always, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue and let's raise the saturation. Now the only thing left to do, of course, is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's do that. Bring down the radius all the way, increase the details all the way up, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key and increase the amount of sharpening done. So now it's time to clean up this image. Usually I'm using Photoshop because to me Lightroom is just too slow at fixing sensor spots like this, but let's do it in Lightroom this time. So we want to click on the remove tool and here we are going to choose the heel brush. Then we can make use of that visualize spots feature. Click this checkbox and let's see, we want to see more spots. So I'm going to increase that slider right here. And now I'm just going to brush over all these dots in the sky. Okay, that's looking much cleaner. So I think that's the finished image. I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful and this tone curve thing I have showed you was something new to you. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.